My name is Sam Wagner. I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Screens can be classified into those who include reality versus those who exclude it. Screens have been with us for centuries now. Paintings are screens, and so are windows. Yet the very nature of screens has undergone a revolutionary transformation in the last decade or so. All the screens that preceded the personal digital assistant and the smartphone were inclusive of reality. They were end screens. When you watched them, you could not avoid, you could not screen out data emanating from your physical environment. Screen end reality. It's a prevalent modus operandi. Consider the cinema, the television, and the personal computer. Even when entangled and enmeshed in the flow of information provided by these devices, you were still fully exposed to, and largely aware of, your surroundings. The screens of the past were one step removed. There was always a considerable physical distance between user and device, and the field of vision extended to encompass copious peripheral input. Now consider the iPhone, or the digital camera. Their screens, although tiny by comparison, monopolize the field of vision and exclude the world by design. The physical distance between retina and screen has shrunk to the point of vanishing. Three-dimensional television, with its specialty eyeglasses and total immersion, is merely the culmination of this trend, as is, of course, virtual reality. They bring about the utter removal of reality from the viewer's experience. Modern screens are therefore OR screens. You either watch the screen, or you observe reality. You cannot do both. The digital camera profoundly affects the way we perceive and represent the world around us on virtual film. To start with, the user of the analog camera used to watch the world, however, indirectly. All that stood between him and reality was the viewer of his apparatus. He recorded what he saw out there. In contrast, the user of the digital camera watches a representation of the world on a screen. He records what he sees on the screen of his gadget, not in reality. He rarely glances up to gaze directly at his subject matter. The digital camera is more forgiving and more permissive. Errors can be instantly deleted. The whole experience is characterized by an urgency and immediacy that is absent from the analog camera. The digital camera allows its user to experiment with cost-free and therefore risk-free alternatives. It transforms the whole procedure of shooting pictures into a spontaneous, even irreverent experience. With the digital apparatus, visuals are a public good. Environmental facts that used to serve as external constraints on the use of an analog camera, the quantity and angle of light, for instance, are now compensated for by special settings in its digital successor. One can always also, one also can always Photoshop the result. The typical gadget provides for preset templates that capture the moment in an optimal manner, removing obstacles and limitations posed by the photographer's physical environment and surroundings. In other words, the digital camera removes reality, replaces it with simulacrum, with a simulation. Digital photo is never a finished product. It can be downloaded onto storage devices, the computer's hard disk, the internet. And there, it can be edited with software applications. Reality is thus rendered tentative and negotiable, a declaration of intent, rather than a final state.